We have an interesting interview actually with Rihanna on Vogue, which was really cool and made me love her more than, you know, most people. Obviously, everyone loves her, so I'm not going to say that, but a really cool cover. Number one, because, you know, you've got Rihanna on a cover of Vogue with a do rag on, which I think is pretty amazing. You've got her wearing, obviously, um, the quintessential, I think it's British Vogue too, so it makes sense because they've got Burberry on the front there, designed by Ricardo Tishi, longtime collaborator of Rihanna. And yeah, it's a really cool interview. It kind of speaks about what her views are on music. She's obviously going back to making a new tune, a new album, sorry. So she's working um, really hard on that. I like that she mentioned in the interview that she's trying not to... She doesn't like the idea of themes in interview, which is very uh, themed albums, which is very interesting. I'm, my, some of my favorite albums are themed, right? Especially you know, think of the old Leonard Skinner albums, and you think of stuff like Kendrick Lamar's done. You think of stuff that you know, even something like Drake has done. Like some of the better artists are able to kind of paint a picture through the music they do, and it kind of you know, you kind of visualize in your head. I think of something like After Hours of the Weekend is a good idea behind it. You can play out the entire film from the beginning to the end and it kind of fits it in the whole anthology of their previous or the whole discography the whole catalog kind of fits in with that project nothing sort of stands out by its own the only person who i kind of give a blight to that is some of the trap rappers right they just make tracks and they put them all together in an album and just put them out there but i think when you're like a pop star mega star like ariana sometimes it's you're best suited to kind of take advantage of the fact that you have the ability to put out what you want and people are going to lap it up so why not just take a risk and make a themed album and then slip in a couple of pop hits here and there, right? That's what you should be doing. But she's really kind of flipping the script and saying, nah, fuck the themes. I'm just going to make what I like and then select what I like from it and put it in an album, which is, you know, interesting. I'm not sure if it's going to go down as well as she hopes it does because people are looking forward to an album. But then maybe people, maybe she's thinking people actually don't want albums, they want music. I like the fact that she's also trying not to be de- dictated by her fans. I think Bob Dylan suffer from that a bit, didn't he, right? And that's what he written Chronicles that like he suffered from having to kind of answer to his fans about his art, his work, and that's what they, that's I think most artists or most people of prominent levels say that you should never be responding to your fans. You should be giving them what you think is you want to give them at that set time because if you start responding to them, you get caught in this loop where you're just repeating your greatest hits and not actually evolving. And for the most part, your fans might not know what they like. No, your no, your fans might not might not might come around to what you do later on right so you kind of owe it to them to kind of push the envelope and then let them catch up later and then you know kind of continue on but the fact that you, sh- you shouldn't be kind of um, allowing them to dictate your art- artistry so i thought that was interesting um let me see if i can get up on here actually find the kind of quote on album what was it da, 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 da. what was it is it and i say is it a few minute themes yeah there we go so here's her talking about it, right? So I'll quickly, I'll speak about that one. Da, 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 da. So, um, and I think the 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 big up the whoever wrote the article too. Um, where's this lady? I think it's a lady, right? Um, Afua Hirsch, definitely a really really well written article. You can tell this person is a huge Rihanna fan, which is amazing because a lot of times you get interviewers who do these interviews with big artists and it seems like they're they, they kind of they kind of have contempt for the person they're interviewing they don't really enjoy being in their company they're just doing it because their publication sent them out to do a field piece which is super annoying but you definitely get the feeling reading this that this person is in love with Rihanna as much as anyone else is and just really gushing at the opportunity to be in the same environment as the as her sitting in the same office smelling her all this sort of stuff it's a really it's a really descriptive kind of love letter to Rihanna basically from a stand but I like this bit here it says here the following it says um here of all places at her record company's offices, it's hard to ignore the small matter of her next music project, nicknamed R9, because it will be her ninth album. The absence of a delay, of which has been tirelessly debated by her army of stands, the Navy. She says, "I can't say when I'm going to drop." She says, and it couldn't even it could even be by the time this read it, but of course not. But I'm very aggressively, but I'm very aggressively working on music. And it continues. What can we expect? I don't want my albums to feel like themes. Okay, which I like. She she says, taking a sip of wine. There are no rules. There are no. F- there's no format. There's just good music, and if I feel like it, um, and if I feel it, I'm putting it out. Does that mean that contrary to reports, it's not going to be a reggae album? I ask, trying to hide my disappointment. Rihanna chuckles. Oh no, that's happening. She assures me. But on this, as in life, she won't be pinned down. I feel like I have no boundaries. I've done everything. I've done all the hits. I've tried every genre. Now I'm just, I'm wide open. I can make anything I want. Which is way, I think, that's a pinnacle of artistry, right? 
once you scale that mountain and you're able to kind of because i think part of the reason why a lot of artists aren't able to do that is obviously the kind of balance between pure artistry and obviously being able to be a commercial hit for your label labels invest money time resources into an artist they hope you're going to be the next rihanna they hope they're going to be the next drake but if you're not able to deliver the bare minimum in terms of um you know invested into you for the label and the commercial side of it you can't expect them to allow you to go ahead and make your concept album that's not the right way to i think some artists get a bit deluded by that fact i think you should always have the idea the henry orleans idea where you kind of take money from a corporation to kind of give back to your core right that kind of like punk rock idea where it's not it's, it's not selling out if you take that money to kind of feed back into your community where you come from and to also allow you to do the work that you always wanted to do so you should be able to in a concept album be able to supply your label with one or two tracks that you think is going to work for as a, especially if you're in the infancy as going to work as a pop track because you look at someone like a frank ocean like you know nostalgia ultra all those per previous tapes of sound nothing like what he's making now he's definitely in his kind of artistry weirdo bag because he's a he's afforded that luxury because he's obviously been able to put up the numbers so if you can put up numbers you are able to do whatever the fuck you want and i think that's the difference between some of the bigger acts and some of the people who are tr who are pretending to be big acts is that they can't even put up artists they can't even put up numbers with the stuff that they think is poppy so imagine when they full they go full artistry and they start going to be weirder it's not going to be a good time so i thought that was an interesting tidbit and then the other tidbit i thought was interesting was her perspective on um the fact that she makes makeup for women of a darker complexion i like the fact that she just kind of you know was matter of fact about it that this should be normal the fact that it's a big deal is actually more upsetting to her than it is a, a pat on the back which i'll definitely agree because i think you look at something like this, which I'm going to quickly get up here, right? Shall I read it? Let me just look at something like this. Or let me look at something like... Let's just, yeah, let's just look at something else. I found on my Twitter quickly. It kind of speaks upon this, and I thought it's really cool. I think I just retweeted it a minute ago. Let's see if I can find it. Da, 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 da. And it does really speak upon, I think, what Rihanna's message is in terms of um, makeup for darker skin girls not shouldn't be like a thing that you should be celebrating it should just be what everyone's doing so this is this um someone shared this on twitter this person called uh lexa professional one word that's their handle or i said no this handle is a uh, squeezy f baby but you know it doesn't matter i'll link in the show notes so the tweet is of these um three girls right dressed up in this sort of like i don't i think it's a, a range of clothing uh from a brand called girlfriend lycra sort of like you know crop tops and lycra leggings and shit and they're all kind of you know different sizes different complexions different backgrounds colors race creed religions whatever it may be just a quintessential of the moment thing and the twitter person the person on twitter writ as a caption here i don't trust companies that advertise like this i feel like their corporate is all men is all mean white girls right which is definitely true right when you look down below and you saw the actual link to the actual team of this brand called girlfriend you look at who's actually behind it everyone in the kind of team is fairly skinny and fairly white right so it's they're obviously pandering to some extent right so then in this rihanna interview with uh, vogue she says here that it should be normal let's see if i can get it up on here quickly to show you it says here normal mm. So, so the film's following here, right? Admittedly, um, this is relatively small fry compared to Fenty Beauty, she says, right? Um, which Rihanna founded almost three years ago, and now in uh, and is now a market colossal worth of some three billion dollars. That's more the Fenty effect. Other makeup brands, um, long guilty of neglecting women of color by offering few, if any, deeper shades, suddenly upped their diversity game, helped to establish forty shades as new industry standards. But Rihanna is reluctant to celebrate herself. She says, "I'm shocked by people saying, oh my God, what made you think of making makeup for black girls?'" Right? She continues, "I'm like, what? You thought this?" was like a marketing strategy like i'm a genius um, it's, it's shocking most of the time she says then then it turns to disappointment that this is a groundbreaking thing right now in my mind this is just normal which is definitely the thing i, I agree because i think when um people were celebrating the demise of victoria's secret one thing that really got me curious was that i just couldn't understand why they would why they were putting themselves in that position why someone with victoria's secrets who has you know all this data of people that walk into their stores they have cameras in their stores they have trackers like every retail store has in terms of knowing the footfall you have probably people that work in the social media team people that work in seo they have a very good idea of who buys who's the actual woman for victoria's secret right then they have this show 
where they kind of Victoria, the Victoria Secret angels, and they come down a runway with these spectacular kind of outfits and gowns, which you know, for more, for lack of a better term, don't really reflect the person actually buys the brand. But you're right; you can suspend disbelief for some reason, right? Because you think, you know, hey, it's these girls. Um, they're it's something aspirational, maybe for some women. They they want to remember when they were they used to look like that, or when they were that skinny, or aspire to be that slim, whatever it may be. But then times change and now suddenly the conversation is about inclusivity right about representing everybody which is shouldn't be a thing but let's imagine it is Victoria's Secret has all that data about who actually buys their product and they're still unable to just make that person the person who they kind of advertise or who's their ambassador I don't understand why they didn't do that because for sure if you've ever walked past Victoria's Secret if you walked anywhere past where people are walking out of it the people that you see walking out of it don't look like Bella Hadid they don't look like Gigi Hadid they don't look like Kylie Jenner they look like Kim Kardashian they don't look like any of those people they're just regular women who want to look sexy who want to feel special who want to buy something nice for themselves so for Victoria's Secret to look all that data and not have an idea of how to kind of pivot it shows that they were just like have no idea what was going on um so but then I also like the fact that someone like a Rihanna could come in and just kind of completely kill them and take them out of it with their with her kind of I, f- I forgot what the name is called of it the lingerie brand that she has that was really did really well they did a massive show had all these rappers performing um, really a kind of a celebration of womanhood in that regard and just did it in a really clever way and again I just I think um, that's probably the reason why those big companies exist right they exist because they kind of poke a reaction they kind of provoke a reaction of somebody like Ariana who's kind of sitting down there her in her own right d- d- thinking like what the fuck are these guys doing and then you just decide to do the thing yourself because it's not being done right way in it so I think that is probably the the reason of existing but definitely recommend you check it out it's a really cool article some of the really amazing pictures you've got this amazing image I, feel, I don't know who did the photography for this actually I'm not sure doesn't it say the photography it doesn't does it but it's fucking beautiful man okay let's read it here so maybe they've got the actual cover images here that we can see the actual images but i think it's incredibly well done um recommend you check it out really amazing article uh she's just the coolest person in the world really isn't she really to be completely fair um yeah very very striking moment she's wearing a do in front of uh vogue i recommend you check it out because she's the best but yeah i like the fact that she described it being as normal it's not a big deal it shouldn't be a big deal and i think i highly highly agree with it too and i think it's um again it's just good to see that there's loads of other brands popping up out of the woodwork some of them independent some of them not well known or is, is it by stephen klein okay awesome stephen klein photography who are kind of taking that the, taking that mantle and deciding to represent people who have been unrepresented and you know there's, a, there's a probably a lot more disposable there's probably a lot more I just don't get it, man. Imagine if you have Victoria's Secrets and you just love it's so, this is similar to like Kodak and um uh who was it? Was it Instagram? What was the company that tried to buy into or and they turned down? Was it Instagram? Might have been Instagram. One of those kind of it's kind of similar to that sort of thing, right? The kind of long storied brand and doesn't have a clue what's actually going on in the streets, decide to kind of just rest on their laurels and now look at them. Out of business and not thriving at all but yeah recommend you check it out it's titled rihanna talks new music fenty skincare and her plan to have three or four kids it's on vogue now again i'll link in the show notes for you guys to read yourselves if you're that way inclined